Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to the Soccer Talk Wads podcast. It is Thursday, Wednesday, just kidding, February 22nd, my mother's birthday for those who are interested. And we are here for the first time. We've been waiting three years to say this. It's not game day, but it is game week. The MLS season kicks off on Saturday, or at least the same. Is there an early game or is it all Saturday? It's all Saturday, right? It's all Saturday. Good. I oh, yeah. Want that. I wanted to, I knew Apple I TV would have it no done. other way. That's right. And uh, St. Louis City FC's or FC's season kicks off. Their inaugural season kicks off Saturday night against Austin FC. We are going to dive into that game in a minute. But before we dive deep into that game, we're going to dive deep into the entire Western Conference. And to do that, I am joined by two wonderful gentlemen in the state of Missouri, I think. Justin, you're currently in the state of Missouri, yeah, I'm, right? I'm in, I'm in it. Kansas City, though, so not really in the state of Missouri. I've you're seen a sporting. lot of Missouri this week, so it's, well, I've that's been repping us hard. That's right. I flew. I was in Missouri this week for part Man. of it, technically. If you count the part... If you start your week on Monday, then I was there for five and a half hours. But if you count <laughs> Sunday, then I was there for much longer. And uh, we are also joined by Ian as well. Ian, how are you? I'm a state old champion. I know all about the western half of right. the U.S. Oh, nice. North, nice. North Dakota was a tough we one. Love it. We love it. We uh, love it. I love hard. <laughs> yeah. I don't like. I don't like when they throw Nebraska at me. I'm yeah, like, that's, Ooh. That's, that's, Ooh. <laughs> too many squares. Ian, have. <laughs> Have you recovered from being the poor sap that had to drive me to the airport at 4 a.m. on Monday morning? I have. I myself am experiencing jet lag. Good. I would think you would. Uh, it was it was wonderful. Thank you for doing that. Uh, thank you for, you know, being on this podcast as well. We've Three years we've been doing this while this team built slowly over time. After their announcement, we jumped right into the ring and, you know, we were prepared for a two year wait. And then uh, Mother Nature threw COVID at us and gave us a three year wait. But it's been worth it. We're finally here. We finally get to see a possibly slightly above mediocre team take the field Saturday night. I could Love not it. be more excited. I'm going to force my German co-workers to sit through the game with me <laughs> at 8.30 p.m. on Saturday and uh, I can't wait. So why don't we go ahead and dive in and talk about the Western Conference in um, Major League Soccer, because it is a conference that I would say is extraordinarily top heavy. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of extremely good teams, a fair number of OK teams and some pretty bad teams. And I'm just hoping that we climb out of the pretty bad and into the OK category. That's the dream. That That's is the dream. the dream. Just just don't be Cincinnati, <laughs> baby. Just don't be Cincinnati. But I was looking because like not to put the cart before the horse, but obviously a lot of the predictions are out there. They have St. Louis either as the 14th or 13th place team. But like, I think it's very easy to go from 14th to like ninth in this conference. If we're, oh, if we're yeah. shooting for the stars, baby. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Justin, you know, the Western Conference alphabetically starts with Austin FC, so we should probably start there. Uh, does it not? It does start with Austin FC. It does I'm start. Afraid. I included them in our uh, game preview, so our, nice. gotcha. we're a little bit up um, in the air here. Austin uh, finished last season, I believe, in second place. Is that right? Second in place the in the West? behind the uh, strong play of Sebastian Drusi, who are they They are very reliant of. Uh, yes. And like a good little, I'd say like blueprint for how, you know, City should like to kind of spend their summer. Because for those of you that don't know, Austin brought in Drusi in the summer of their inaugural season. And they went from pretty bad to like pushing for the playoffs. And then last year, of course, they came in second and uh, made a big deal about how no one picked them to do so. So good That's stuff right ian is trying to quietly eat while i'm mute right now ian what are you eating ian tell us yogurt and granola it's very okay. good hey right. i already have my yogurt justin you got to get some yogurt now sure. you gotta go get gurt, baby. Down the <laughs> yogurt boy did you know that gogurt is just yogurt it's just in a tube that's the only difference it tastes so much better when it comes out of that's a tube. true that's yeah, right. everything it and it's delicious. everything yeah. tastes better out of a tube i don't think anyone would <laughs> disagree with that um, Austin's going to be another good team. Another team is going to be 
a good team again this year. I don't know what I was trying to say initially. Um, they had a friend of the podcast, Giassi's artist, uh, mm-hmm. over the off season. They have one of the better goalkeepers in MLS. They should be and remain a top four team in the West. They are our opponent in our first away game. It's a home stadium that has a great atmosphere. Um, we will talk more about the game in general in a little while, but uh, any other takes on Austin FC? And also then let's just tear apart this new kit that they're giving us this year. It's a yeah, um, I guess, you know, to start off, fuck Anthony Precourt. But outside of that, yeah, I think we we hit all the talking points there. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. Uh, Ian, mm-hmm. as, a, as a, you know, incoming MLS fan, what's your vibe on Ooh, Austin FC? This, uh, this kit is something. Um, yeah, I, there. I like <laughs> their crest. I've always liked their little tree crest thing, so that's cool. I like the color green so that's the color, great the color green is good what do we think about the abomination of a jersey that they created for themselves what's happening it'd be cool if it. all those lines lined up but i get that the whole yeah. point is that they don't and they do a, <laughs> they don't line up in a lot of places which makes i get it that worse. it's the point but the point <laughs> is not good <laughs> Mm, yeah i hate it i deeply <laughs> hate it and then on the back it's just green there's no no more lines this oh, looks no. like who's that team who's the vegan english league two team oh forest green forest green this looks like a forest green knockoff but it's not as good as any of their knockoffs um or any of their kits you know yeah those are a little bit wonky um yeah i don't know why i mean i guess they're at risk of being called boring if they just go with their like typical all stripe look that they had last year. But I thought that the other home jersey was good. Like I know it's kind of Atlanta just in green, but I think that's kind of classic. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's bad. I think it's obviously unappealing to look at. Justice artist has to wear that kit. It's wild to me. I mean, this is just like who thought it looks good? Especially the little bars on the bottom left of it and the shoulder. And uh, anyway, uh, moving on to <laughs> Colorado Rapids. Um, Rapid Man. They, mm. <laughs> that's right. Rapid Man is the best part about this club, undoubtedly. They finished 10th in the West last year uh, as Ian's dogs lose their shit. They are not Colorado Rapids. They, they do not like whatsoever. Um, they did not qualify for the MLS Cup playoffs. If it were this season, they would almost qualify for the MLS Cup playoffs in 10th place, but not quite. Uh, head coach Robin Frazier, they play, by the way, at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. Mm-hmm. So that's got to be a curse. Um, talk about what this team did over the summer, Justin, and what we can expect from this team going forward. Yeah, so obviously they lose Jesse Zardes, but they made a lot of depth pickups. So it's Andreas Masco, uh, Kevin Cabral, and Connor Ronan, who are all kind of going to be nice depth pieces, although Cabral does have a designated player tag. So like it's a, it's an interesting lineup. It's one I'm not necessarily in love with, but Robin Frazier is a very good coach, and I think he can get a lot out of an undervalued roster. So like I don't love it but I think they'll be fine. Like, I think they're in that like lower, lower tier of Western conference, pushing on the playoffs kind of team. Ian, what's your vibe check on Colorado Rapids and rapid man? I need, I need more rapid man. I feel like, does he still exist? He still exists, right? I believe so. I hope so. If not, he must, he must, he has to. We need something. We need a rival mascot. I think they brought him back last year or like, sometime recently if he doesn't um, exist then why does this team exist that's my question <laughs> colorado just doesn't feel like a soccer city to me i don't know too many mountains not enough flat spaces for you know soccer fields and whatnot <laughs> i think it's this team this team in particular is what you get that vibe from because i think like denver as a whole has a lot of soccer talent but uh the rapids are just not it Mm-hmm. I like this when is, you type, of course the section where we shit on all the Western Conference teams. Just so everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> I like when you type Rapid Man into Google Images how quickly it turns into just images of Quick Man from Mega Man Two, which you know Quick Man is 
baller and his stage is incredibly difficult so that's i guess speaks kindly of rapid man but it's not <clears> the <throat> same person uh yeah so moving on from colorado we have sc dallas next they are a team that were had a meteoric rise one might say last season all the way uh finished fourth in the west last season um they you know are a texas team so they're terrible and we hate them they're new jersey oh wait you know what we didn't do colorado's jersey we'll do that after this we'll do them both together um because we got to talk about this fc dallas jersey uh they uh added giovanni jesus this summer they added sebastian i'm not even going to try ibiaga sebastian ibiaga i can do it see and uh, jose mulatto as well and um it's some cool additions, but not probably enough to put them in that LAFC, mm. uh, Austin FC conversation, I would say. Yeah, I think they're still a very good team. They like restructured, like strengthened, I would say, their, their roster, but they haven't brought in any world beaters that would take them to that next level, like unless Jesus Ferreira takes another step. Mm-hmm. yeah and i like jesus pax ferreira, and call too you're always waiting on palma call to take that next step in his development yeah jesus ferreira is a huge part of this team um for as much crap as he took at the national team level he was absolutely indispensable for um dallas last year and he will need to continue to be if they uh expect to go forward and have a lot of success uh, they're, you know, generally ranked in that kind of six to eight, fourth range in by most of the experts here. Um, occasionally drop down as far as eighth, considered a playoff team across the board. But um, yeah, I mean, FC Dallas as a team, just vibe check wise, doesn't do a lot for me, never has. I don't know. Dallas teams always manage to be so boring. Um, but uh, I think they'll be good. I mean, they'll be good, but not probably challenging for mls cup or anything yeah ian where's your vibe check on fc dallas was this the team whose development team yes yes played? Yeah. all right i remember this. they have a great development system well see that's bodes well for them maybe not this year but in the future yeah they uh, always got guys down there sometimes they sell them sometimes they don't texas texas unlike uh colorado i feel like a soccer state a soccer area um, texas is an everything area there's too many of those people i know that's right there's so many <laughs> they got, there's, they got there's big open everybody. spaces and billions of people and states just, just bursting with athletes yeah that's right that's right uh let's talk about fc dallas oh, i'm Jersey. dying to talk about this kit Can we, i've been dying to talk about this all day with you it <laughs> is justin your take first it's I good jump in I like wow. it from like okay. a, so if you know that this used to be the Dallas burn, right? They had that little uh, Mustang, uh-huh. they had the burn flames all over it. I like it from that. It's like a way to be retro while still having like a not completely disgusting kit, I would say. Ian's dogs jumped in just at the wrong time because I really need to get his take on this kit. He's nodding his head. He's licking his lips. Um, he's scratching his chin. I, he's humming. I love that this horse breathes fire. Uh, that's pretty dope. <laughs> um, probably want to check that out. It's probably not good. Um, but these <sighs> kits are awesome. Like, I love the flames on it. I love that they're like, what are these? Like champagne colored almost. Uh, I don't know. That's They do it for me. They're just complicated enough. <laughs> I like that evaluation analysis. <laughs> I uh, I'm I'm not as hot on them as you guys, but maybe they'll grow on me. I need you to wanted you back. wanted to come in here fire, and I could tell. Here no, I I, <laughs> I was, I was saying myself. Just thinking I think, fire puns. <laughs> I mean, the FC burn tie-in is cool. The fire breathing horse is cool, if nonsensical. I. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sold. I guess I'm not sold on the color of the flames as much mm, as, but maybe. I see that. But I also feel like more might have been worse. Like if they were actually red, that could have been even, even worse. So yeah, it's always that line between like it would have to then go all out in terms of like yeah. the red and yellow. Yeah. I think this is one where I definitely, if I see it in action, it could look really cool or it could look um, kind of blah. But uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic Hmm. colorado's jersey 
a lot going on here a lot of shapes a lot of a lot of uh angles you might say uh i i can't quite decide i feel like they did a little too much here on this one it looks okay i like it overall but it's like it's just shapes you know mm. i don't know how do you like do? complicated you shapes though one? you can pick this one up at damn flashes that's right oh yeah, yeah. this is damn flashes shirt for sure <laughs> you you go to a soccer jersey store and you see 50 guys that look just like me fighting over complicated kits you go in yes you do uh what are your thoughts on this one tell me disagree with me tell me i'm wrong no i i have a similar i I just don't get it it's just not (laughs) yeah you wouldn't also Um, i don't like i mean colorado has great colors and they're like hardly visible in here so yeah yeah i I guess that's my like qualm is what is this trying to be i kind of like that it's like what is it you do figure out what you do figure out what you do let me say uh, i need to read the description of this real quick yeah you like you like like that it's like like a diamond yeah i like that it's like diamondy and they have this weird like heart diamond on the jersey and like the bottom left i don't know what that's for Ian will like anything that has even okay i take back action to rihanna so i take back uh (laughs) that's right (laughs) That's right. Take back shitting on the shirts because it's in support of mental health awareness and issues. Well, the wow, Center. look at wow, oh, wow. everyone. Wow. <laughs> well, well, well. I uh, mental health, mental, mentally ill people who need mental care mm-hmm. can also have good taste. And this jersey does not. So, you know. <laughs> I I like to think of it as like, you know, it's a the diamond version of this jersey, and there's probably like a pearl version. And then, Ooh, you know, then right. you got black and white you got x and y we, we're just gonna lab, label all the pokemon shining, games shining shining pearl and ultra diamond as yeah well that's right i it's it is doing a lot but i don't know it works for me maybe take out some of the yellow if you take out the yellow actually i love this that's fair i'll i'm i can get down with that uh let's move on to a team who's uh jersey makes me feel emotions that are strong and warm but whose head coach does not it's the houston dynamo justin before we dive into the jersey tell us your thoughts on ben olsen and the houston dynamo ben olsen does not spark joy to me uh yeah i mean it's like a okay roster with a probably bad head coach that they brought in for some reason i don't know i'm not a big ben olsen fan after watching what happened in dc i don't know why you give him a second chance but uh I do like Coco Cascarillo, Ria. I don't Corescula. I just completely butchered that. <laughs> <laughs> but know, so I, I like him as a creative midfielder and like potentially you could run everything through him and have an okay time, but they're just not nearly enough there in that roster. Is this the yeah. same Ben Olsen that is featured in backyard soccer? The game? I yes. want to say yes. It is. Played for DC. DC, DC United. Yeah. yeah, same guy sick <laughs> i'm in i'm in i'm all over that was like the, that was the peak of his career that was being a backyard soccer yeah player. i i know <laughs> that's where my knowledge starts and this and is where my ends. knowledge has gotten me oh, yeah, i completely forgot right. he was a backyard soccer uh, never mind i'm just changing my opinion on ben saying let him coach forever <laughs> houston did lose uh the best assistant captain in major league soccer tim parker this that's summer, right so yes um, major blow he, yeah that's gonna take them down a peg most Tim Parker have... going from team predicted to finish 13th to team predicted to finish 14th in the league. So I'm sure he loves that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Franco Escobar did join the team though, and his name is awesome. So, you know, it's a mixed bag. Most people have them finishing outside the playoff picture. Everyone, I think, has them finishing outside the playoff picture. The highest ranking is 10th. Um, but you never know what changes could happen midseason. Now let's talk about the jersey about what to which i have a borderline sexual attraction i love it it is i love this color i love bold color choices and just sticking to them Mm. um the kind of heat radiant effect i think they could have i probably would have liked it more if they'd just done that on the whole jersey rather than in these little like hexagon things but even so love it it's so good etc any thoughts on this? Disagree like, with me. Tell me. I always you. like the orange. Why do you hate all the jerseys I like? Oh my god! No, I'm just settled on a good color of orange. Like this 
kit and the uh, Houston Dash kit are both like just gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, I like them. I think the fact that it's on a orange background is doing it a disservice to me because it's hurting my eyes. But that's true. I the mean, jersey that's itself true. is pretty nice. That wasn't a great choice. I'm. I want to buy one. That's so that's on Major League Soccer Soccer dot com. That's not on Houston. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Fix your site, Don Garber. <laughs> Fix your site. Major League Soccer Soccer dot com. Uh, let's talk about LA Galaxy your thoughts you put it pretty bluntly here justin so why don't you go ahead and dive into it yeah well we've been talking about bad teams recently so (laughs) uh, i think the galaxy are a good team i think they have issues with their depth that like could be what derails them um but i think like despite losing julian rajo to barcelona they can get a full season out of ricky puig if he doesn't leave in the summer like he's probably the most creative number 10 in the league. He's so good. And as long as Chicharito can stay healthy and be informed, like that's a really, really solid team. But their depth is an issue, like as far as picking them to win the league necessarily. But like, yeah, I think they'll take that step towards being like an actual contender. Yeah, I agree. Uh, vibe check, Ian. LA Galaxy. LA Galaxy. Go a ahead. storied team. Because of backyard soccer, because they That's existed right. in that game. I like, got uh, uh, Ian's MLS knowledge is solely to like the six teams that were available. Yeah, that's, soccer. It's that's good. right. <laughs> the, oh. uh, the Colorado Rapids, Chicago Fire, DC United, Kansas City Wizards, Columbus Crew, Metro Racist. Stars, LA Galaxy, Dallas Burn, Miami Fusion, San Jose Earthquakes, Tampa Bay Mutiny, and New England Revolution. Pour one out and for Miami and Tampa, huh? I know. Kobe Jones, also classic. That is where my love for Kobe Jones comes in, yes. Um, <laughs> they, uh, yeah, I mean, I think they're going to be a good team this year. The predictions for them are uh, mostly positive. Let's see how they look. Yeah, overall. I think they had a good offseason, too. They're a little bit across the board, though. I mean, they range as hard as high as Tim Bogert putting them first in the West and Daniel Slayton putting them eighth in the West. So there's a, a good amount of range, but everybody has them in the playoff picture. Greg Vanny's there. You know, they could always make a big move in the summer window as well. So yeah. um, I expect them to be good. Ch- Chicharito is great. Uh, and um, they've just got some phenomenal talent on that roster. So um you know, you can't complain too much about them. What would you say about their LA jersey? Because I saw some reviews that put this very highly, and I'm curious on y'all's thoughts. I think it's okay. I guess I didn't realize that the LA flag looked like that. Uh... <laughs> yeah, nor did I. I think it's kind of boring. Like, yeah. you have colors at the colors, but outside of that, it's just green with like the red stripe at the back. Like, I don't the know. Flag is zigzaggy. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's song. get into this. Uh, we gotta talk welcome, we welcome to Flag Talk. To talk this players. is the portion of the podcast that you hear every week, where we talk about flags. Uh, today we are talking about the LA Galaxy flag, or not the LA Galaxy, but the LA flag. Uh, which, if I could just pop that into the chat here, and uh, give me your thoughts. So we have we have a green, yellow, and red tricolor with some diagonal squigglies and then a crest in the middle. Thoughts? This is going to tie it's, into the kit as well. Not, the, not di- the squigglies are <laughs> unnecessary. This is unnecessary. Is this You're supposed to, to give do... me a Latin vibe? Is I think it's supposed for? to be like, here are the different cultures we have. The squigglies here, mean here that it's the underneath the other ones. I'm trying to trying to find meaning here but if you're going to do all that don't put the crest in the middle also this is just doing way too much guys Got i like it on the jersey i like how it's incorporated in the jersey but like that being the actual flag itself is like a no-no mm-hmm. so way to salvage a shitty flag the three colors galaxy. on the flag <laughs> the th- three colors on the flag represent olive trees orange groves and vineyards they also symbolize the history of the city with gold and red representing spain the country who first colonized the city and green and red representing mexico who took over where new spain when new spain achieved independence the city seal is shown in the center of the flag surrounding the shield are representations of three major california crops 
grapes, olives, and oranges. The seal doing too much, guys. A, doing too much. <laughs> seal contains a heraldic shield quartered showing an approximation of the shield shown on the great seal of the United States, an approximation of the flag of California, an approximation of the coat of arms of Mexico, and a tower and a lion of the kingdom of Castile and the kingdom of Leon representing the arms of Spain. So there you go. It's a lot. You're doing too much. You're hmm. doing too much. Doing too much. You could have just had green, red, and yellow, and it would have been fine. The kit, better than the flag. They didn't try to do that uh, That's right. all over. I, I think I it's... Saw... <laughs> I saw the kit ranked as number one Ooh, in the no, absolutely not. jersey. And absolutely not. It's a fine kit. It is not the best. A, that's just the such best. a coastal elite. If I may yeah. say coastal elite for the first of what I assume are many times on this <laughs> podcast, it's such a coastal elite way to think. You know what I'm saying? You're going to rank that number one before we even talk about Minnesota? Like that is just that's right. gross. Well, I mean, they had already talked about Minnesota because they were counting down to number one. But yes, I mean, broadly speaking. Even worse. That's right. Um, the LA, LAFC was the best team in Major League Soccer by a, a country mile last year. Um, and, uh, many think will continue to be, they were first in the West. They were MLS yeah. cup champions. They were very, very good. They have lost the great Gareth Bale to a career in pro-am golfing, um, <laughs> to a career injury, of golf. <laughs> <That's dream. right. laughs> they, they lost, uh, Christian Arano to, um, uh, league MX and Pachuca. Yes. Pachuca. They also lost Latif Wessing, who was an NF in I can't speak. There's not an N in LAFC, so I don't know why I said that. He was an LAFC original from their uh, mm. draft in 2018. They brought in Aaron Long. They brought in Stipe Biuk, and they brought in Timothy Tillman. They're still going to be very good. They could potentially make one bigger move to kind of replace that uh, that um, profile of Gareth Bale, even though Bale wasn't a... Um, hugely important player I think, on the team you know not expecting them to make their move in the summer in some way is foolish yeah. yeah and they also have a pretty big question mark at the number nine spot which i've heard pretty important spot on the soccer pitch mm-hmm. so um seems like they'll answer that question but they're good enough to try to water until they do um what do you think how do you think they finish this year justin yeah i think by not as strong of a team from like a depth standpoint. Like that's what made them so good last year is that their depth was very good along with just having a good starting 11. I think it's still going to be the top team in the West. I worry about Aaron Long in that system, but I don't know. Aaron Long is an interesting player in terms of like what to make of him. I just don't think that he fits that system very well. Uh, So I think they maybe take a small step back, like, in that aspect, but still finish first in the league, just not be quite as dominant as they were last year. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, Ian, between LAFC and LA Galaxy, who's your favorite? LA Galaxy, pick, it's gotta be. Pick correctly. Wow. Oh, gee. So wrong, God. I'm sorry. Sure. That's because LAFC wasn't in backyard soccer. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> Who could have predicted reason? they'd get another team? <laughs> Such a large city. If I'm basing this off of kits released this season. Mm. Oh, fucking terrible. I'm sorry. This is, this is literally the color of barf. (laughs) Are you, were you about to say good? I would say better than the galaxy. Uh, Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can even agree with that. They used to have like black and gold. Yes. Yeah. So this is their away kit. So it's like the lighter color. Oh, okay. I yeah. mean, are they black not, and gold at home it's so yeah. it's definitely better when it's not on the barf olive green background i will give it that if you ian if you click by the 2023 jersey below the picture and look mm-hmm. at it on its own it definitely looks better i still feel like there could be a little i don't know like the the shade they chose is not it for me the rest of it could be fine but the shade of color they chose i don't just, like this trend in mls kits where the pattern the doesn't continue trend? well that but oh, the pattern the not yeah. continuing to the back oh, 100 percent. and i know yeah. like you have to have a blank space there for the number and the nameplate but it just always bothers me why does it have to be blank though couldn't it just stand out yeah that's my thought like if you look at <laughs> I mean, like the Bundesliga does that thing where they like swoop down so they have the uh-huh. blank space, but like plenty of teams ah. don't have a blank space in the back of their kit. Whatever. Yeah. I'm in a minority uh, there, I know. 
That's all right. Let's get back to <laughs> let's get back to uh, not footballing Nirvana, but uh, jersey release Nirvana mm. in Minnesota United SC. This is a team that is not good and does not have any players. Last in our power rankings, number one in our kit right. rankings, though. That's, so it averages out. <laughs> they do not have any players who I would even want on a jersey, but I would like to buy this jersey. <laughs> one um, blank jersey, please. Minnesota's big problem is that Reynoso is not probably going to play this season he's one of maybe even the best um creator in major league soccer mm. and he's not available for reasons um that are still fairly vague i i believe but legal trouble in in argentina yeah um, i believe now speculation here but i believe he got in trouble for brandishing a gun at a minor i believe is what the uh now this is argentina so is that minor with an o or an e because either one could be bad <laughs> but I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't know the the legalities there. So. That's not great, Reno. <laughs> so um, he uh, was uh, he's a phenomenal player though, and they're Very gonna good. miss him and not more than miss him. They're going to be uh, unable to replace him and be bad because he's not there. Yeah, I think it's just hard when you miss your like creative driving force before the start mm-hmm. of the season, and you can't really plan around that. Like, yeah, I mean, this is like a quarterback. You know, yeah, this is like they have Joe players didn't show I up like there, yeah. like. Robin Laud, I think, is good, but there's a player but... I could put on a jersey. Yeah, <laughs> I won't, but I could. And Maria <laughs> has his moments. Frangipane has his moments, but yeah, like Reynoso was the Frangipan. Mary mm-hmm. Berry entered the chat. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that being said, let's talk about this kit. Can we? Can we oh talk about god. this kit? Oh my god, it's so good! Can it's so please? good! It's stupid. Mm-hmm. It's so good it's stupid I, I don't even have words for it. i mean it looks so good I don't now know. do we dock points for the fact so that you can't actually see the northern lights from minnesota yes you, you can apparently yes, uh, you can. apparently That's you don't lie. have to travel to the arctic circle to see northern lights also known as the aurora borealis thanks to our northern location of vast dark skies we in cook county minnesota are lucky enough to see them often okay Okay. It is, okay. It is, Cook it is a stretch. County, <laughs> Listen, it's a stretch because Minnesota, <laughs> Minneapolis, St. Paul. Correct me if I'm wrong. Ian is all the way down to the south. Oh yeah, southeast, southeast corner. Yeah. Oh, so, Cook, County Cook, Cook County is like Cook County is touching Canada. Canada. Yeah, exactly. So that's a, a that's a Thunder Bay, it's Ontario a suburb. Cook County. I could throw a football <laughs> to Thunder Bay. <laughs> um, Robert Bortuzzo so, has seen the Northern Lights. Yeah. That's, True. Good for him. Uh, it's Closer the, to Minnesota than Minneapolis is. With his history of undoubted concussions, he probably sees them when he closes his eyes. <laughs> oh, but... <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> too, dark, too dark. I wouldn't be proud. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I got Ian. What's so up? What While we're on like <laughs> Minnesota geography, what's with this little like inlet up in like the northernmost Minnesota that's actually Canada? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Oh, this tiny little notch yeah. next to Crane Lake? What's the word there? What's going on? I don't know. Uh, I, there's too many lakes up there. It's more water than it is like land at a certain point. And I'm kind of like, I think you're just in like moss territory. I don't know if this is land anymore, folks. Angle Township. The Angle Inlet. Oh, anyway, What's, we don't need to take up the, that anymore. No, I bet there's something on. to spot over. What's the deal with Minnesota's notch? <laughs> The story behind, yes, okay. Oh, okay, I've come across something. Minnesota Post. (laughs) Minnesota's northwest angle in Lake of the Woods is farther north than any other part of the contiguous U.S. Logically, it would seem that this area of about 123 Mm -hmm. square miles should be in Canada. But this oddest feature of the entire U.S.-Canada boundary was the proper result of American treaties negotiated with Great Britain. The first step was in 1783 Treaty of Paris. Great Britain mm-hmm. agreed to a U.S.-Canada boundary from the Atlantic Ocean to the Mississippi River. West of Lake Superior, the line was to run by middle of the lake and stream to the northwesternmost part of the Lake of the Woods. From that terminus, the specified boundary was a due west line to the Mississippi River. Although they didn't realize that the American and British diplomats had agreed upon a geographic impossibility they accepted map maker john mitchell's description of an egg <laughs> fucking john lake mitchell of the woods jesus that had an obvious northwesternmost point they also obvious. believe mitchell's claim that a line drawn due for west from there would intersect the mississippi in 1798 david thompson proved that the northernmost source of the mississippi was south of lake of the woods this discovery confirmed the existence of a northwest boundary gap 
U.S. obtained an unspecified area west of the Mississippi, yada, 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 1807. There were negotiations. <laughs> the existence of the Northwest Angle was confirmed by a joint American-British Surveying Commission, which complied, compiled the first detailed map of the Lake of the Woods in 1824. David Thompson was back at it again. The chief British surveyor identified the lake's four possible northwesternmost points. <laughs> This is way Why so Why did they let him do it again? He already got it wrong. <laughs> in the West, in the Webster Ashburton Treaty of 1842, they agreed on the boundaries that shaped the Northwest Angle. There were commissions from 1872 to 1875. Surveyors did their business. Um, the U.S. governors, the U.S. government rejected offers to buy the angle from Canada. The Americans realized that it did not have great economic um, value. But yeah, that's going to put us way too close to Winnipeg, I think. They persisted <laughs> in rejecting right. anything uh, that... Hold on, I lost where I was on the page. The US, <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> uh, they persisted in rejecting any offer uh, because of reasons. My computer's flipping out because it doesn't want to connect to my monitor anymore. It says but, no more. It's saying <laughs> like, folks, we are getting way too close for no, 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 no. People, annexing people, people <laughs> want this. That's right. They were <laughs> persisted in rejecting anything that would change the treaty under which they gained their independence. In 1912, another commission survey and monumented the waterline boundary from, northern, from the northwestern moat point. Uh, and since 1925, a joint U.S. Canada Boundary Commission has maintained the boundary. <laughs> we lost. We lost who, all of our listeners. Who gets to be among, on a, that. among other things? <laughs> 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 Stephen said, "Not enough." The commission assures that the boundary is easily identified by appropriate monuments. I okay. love. I love that. That is the most American thing ever, though. To be like, we can't give you this notch of completely meaningless land <laughs> because that would fuck with the Treaty of Paris, and that's where America started. So can't do it. <laughs> Sorry, folks. War Road, Minnesota, is on that lake. There we go. And then the northern Canada part, or on the ba bottom of it? No, on the, on the way to Minnesota. Winnipeg. Well, the no northern you... part is north of the, but the northern part is in the notch, so it's American. all right, all right, all right. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not done with this. We're not done. I tell you when we're done. Okay, we're done. Uh, but the point is, if you're in that notch, you can see the northern lights, and so this jersey slaps, and it also is one yeah. of the few on which the back of the jersey whiteness is acceptable because it yes. looks fine. And you know so what? It the... works. So the, this jersey is the valid. change between the colors on here are little squares. They're little notches. Do you that's think? That's true. I, if I was writing one of those for, representation oh, baby, they're things, talking about the notches. Yeah, you know this the notches. Not, this notch. Uh, this notch represents the, the notch. notch. <laughs> <laughs> the northwest angle, baby. The notch. And then they have all those words on the back. That's right. Uh, not a good team this year, but good. Um, good where it matters, I would say. Good hit. Yes. Exactly. Portland F's, Portland Timbers talking about another good kit. I'm in love with this one as well. Oh. Spoiler. Oh, God. So good. Uh, we are talking about a team that required a Brazilian attacking midfielder, Evander, from a club record transfer transfer fee of one of those uh, country, one of those Dutch teams that I dare not even try to pronounce. Um, he was yeah, the no. Europa League's assist leader, which means nothing. Give it, give it a shot, Justin. Go ahead. I see uh, Midland, Vigiland. Vig oh, fuck. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, move on. I don't know what it is, but I know that wasn't it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he tallied on, 50 goals on, and 58 assists in 167 appearances with the excuse me Danish club. I'm sure the Dutch and the Danes are disgusted by being confused with one another, but I assume mm. they're basically the same. Um, that's their big move over the summer. Uh, they were probably which is a big not... move. I do believe that Evander is going to be a yeah, very, very good player. Good. They were eighth in the West last year. Obviously, that's below their standard of mm. excellence. Uh, they are hoping to be better than that this year. Most people think they will be. A lot of five, six, fourth range on there. Some sevens, um, a couple eights and below. But what are your thoughts on Portland, Justin? Yeah, I think that they'll like I guess I'm still in like a wait and see kind of with Seattle too of like was last year a flash in the pan as far as them being like a worse team or can they like right the ship? Um and I think like I think the vibes are kind of off a little bit with like the Mary Paulson ownership situation too. So 
I don't know. Like I'm a little bit down on them, but more for like off the field issues than like actual the talent that they brought in. Because I like Evander a lot as a player, and I think if anyone is going to help them, it's going to be like a creative attacking midfielder like that. Yeah, I mean he should be really good. Uh, Justin, what are or Justin? Excuse me, Ian. What are your first thoughts uh, when I say the name of Evander? Uh, Evander Kane. Thank you. That's what I assumed. What's your vibe <laughs> check on Portland overall? <laughs> Uh, I mean, this feels like one of those teams that's always good, at the very least good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if if I had to pick a team to follow and, and root for, I'd choose this team if we didn't have one, because they're like the St. Louis of the West Coast. In what ways? I don't know. They're smaller than all the other cities around. That's right. Uh, that's right. That's and about that it. Counts. And you don't have to explain yourself at that's all. That's right. Do the, does the little star above their crest indicate like the one time they won MLS? Yeah, yes, yes, that's MLS. Cup. That's true. Of everybody. That's dope. Everybody I love that. has those. I do like this play. Good job, MLS. This is nice. haven't been paying attention. Um, <laughs> They do that with the World Cup as well. Yes, I knew that. And if somebody has a gold star, it means that they've won ten. Jeez, World geez. Cups, or MLS well, Cup? um, like just in general, usually oh, nice. the gold star is ten. I don't think anyone in MLS won ten yet. I was gonna say that. I don't be believe so. I don't believe that's mathematically uh, possible. This this <laughs> this kit absolutely fucks. By the way, oh yeah, I just want to be very clear on that. So good. Portland undefeated on the kit. Um, but oh my god, I want this one. I may this one I might actually get. This one's so good. Justin, it looks like you disagree. No, I'm sorry, I was trying to see. <laughs> I mean damn it, I want controversy. I'm so excited. I like it. I don't know if I'd buy it. I think that's the that's where I'm at. Oh, you said you're stupid for spending your money. <laughs> you, just, you disgust me. I'm spending Justin's money. I'm it's the same podcast it, money. Dude. I think this is like an Adidas issue. I can I can use the podcast. But why is this the, not this, on right? the back of the kit? Adidas, I know, right? call me, call me, please. I need to talk to you about this. Why is what not on the back? Of why the is pad? why does the yeah, plaid not carry sure. over? It's like, yeah, it's dumb. It's dumb. It's, it's telling so dumb. that it's telling that all of these show only the front of the king <laughs> yeah. you know. that's so, the no, important no, 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 no. yeah they did that the moved on. <laughs> there's nothing on the back there that you need to see um justin give us your thoughts on real salt lake i mean real salt lake they're, they're a team uh, all right and their, <laughs> and their jersey is a jersey so moving on to san jose yeah i mean like I always honestly to... is there more to say about real salt lake they're not really they'll be fine i always try to write up right off real salt lake but they always seem to like quietly be decent and i think that's probably where they are again like a fringe well i guess now with the new playoff format they're probably comfortably a playoff team but uh additions of andre gomez and brian vera helped sure up their fullback situation but those are the only moves they made this offseason like yeah. they're, they'll be fine. They'll be a fine team. Their team is mid, and their jersey is mid. I mean, the jersey's mm. fine. It's clean. It's simple. But it's and the colors are nice. But it's just nothing's going on. You don't there, like that so. Bijan mustard color. You don't like that no, spicy okay. mustard honestly, color. I honestly think it looks fine. It's just like that's not like doing a number for me. You know. Right. Yeah, they went very plain. I think yeah. it's like a very boring kit to me. I appreciate them using a color that's sort of like why. <laughs> appreciate that they were like why would we why would anyone do that and it's like well i don't know we could you know when you look right. at a, a jersey and your first thought is what um, that's the vibe. uh so i don't hate there. it but yeah it's just boring sorry beehive. Steve, no, you're the real salt lake beehive state kit are they the beehive oh, state does it have oh it has little like honeycombs in it i see it now i didn't see that initially they're not actually the bee, what, beehive state it's just they the, are it's just that Mormons lo- love saying, mind your beeswax. So that's mm. how they became it. Few people know the real reason Utah is called the Beehive State. It's uh, because they say, mind your beeswax. The they great state of you. Utah. AKA Don't you dare look it up. This is my the Beehive State. They say Don't that, you like, dare look it up. They say that like this. everyone knows that they're called the yeah, Beehive exactly. State, which is like, this is the first time. This is exactly as popular. It's, as it's a little more complicated. <laughs> it says the Beehive is a symbol used by several religions and has particular roots in the state's dominant religion, the Church of Jesus Christ yes. of Latter-day Saints. Oh, this is a Mormon jersey? Oh, yeah. It's a Mormon kit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was on the money, baby. I knew it was the Mormons. It's always the Mormons in Utah, you know? 
After the pioneers entered the Salt Lake Valley in the late 1840s, Brigham Young, president of the church at the time, wanted to name the new territory Desert. That's a guy that MLS the, wants Desiree. to wrap, you know, MLS amount, wants to get in on that Brigham Young. The odds <laughs> I would have given you before this podcast against Brigham Young being mentioned on this podcast, 150 to 1, easily. 150 he's, to 1 again. These also symbolize hard work, industry, and community. They must work together to thrive. And that's exactly what the pioneers did when that's they were exactly, entering the Salt Lake Valley. That's exactly what Real Salt Lake is. They're a grit and grind team. I've heard, yeah. I've heard them talk about it. Makes so it a lot of sense. Oh, we wanted to name this it. territory Deseret. That word means honeybee in the Book of Mormon. Oh. In, in the, the Book, Book of Mormon. Mormon made their own language up. In the Book of Mormon, that's what that word means. Oh, in what language? So in the book. Wasn't the it language in the in, book. Wasn't it really written in English? English? I can't do this. I'm done. The podcast is done. The podcast is over. I'm out. Uh, San Jose, San Jose earthquakes, or just the they're just the quakes now, right? They're not the earthquakes, or yeah, I mean we can call them the earthquakes though. Oh, they are the earthquakes. Never mind. I'm kidding. Uh, The quakes were uh, last in the Western Conference last year, uh, but they have a new manager. And tell us more, Jess. Yeah, I think it seemed that's gotten better. I think they were so bad last year that a improvement on being that bad is still like you're still kind of at the bottom, but like things are linking up for them. What percentage they... of their badness would you say had to do with the departure of Chris Wondolowski? <laughs> uh, I mean, last year's they Chris were never that bad before he was retiring. Yeah, you know what but I'm he so... got old though. Like once you lose your world class right. striker ability, right? That's what I'm saying. He's the he's the yeah. Reason. Did you, like, did they have a hold succession on, hold on, plan? Hold on one moment. Hold on one moment. <laughs> did you just call Chris Wondolowski a quote world class striker? <laughs> a your... league best striker. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Donald Trump just flashing. I in can't front of me. argue with that. <laughs> that's right. He I can't argue with that. As sad as it makes uh, exactly. I'm sorry, Steven. I'm sorry to do that to you. Um, but yeah, I think That's like right. I liked Matias Almeida, but he had obviously kind of reached his end with that team. So you bring in a new coach, new fresh look. Um, I think they did fine this offseason. I think a lot of their next step is built by Kate Cowell kind of taking that next step too. We saw that in the US game last month. This is like seems like a guy ready to, you know, go from pretty good prospect to actually full fledged star. So that's kind of where their next step comes in. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, The jerseys to me, I like, uh, but this is probably the one where it's the biggest travesty that it doesn't Mm -hmm. carry over to the back. Mm -hmm. It just looks awful. It's just black on the back. Even if you put it like in the numbers, couldn't you make the numbers that color and pattern or something? Like anything. I like that pattern so much too. It's just such a travesty. Yeah. I like the colors. That's clean. Yeah. It looks it looks like an earthquake. If an earthquake was shapes, that would be what That's shape fair. an earthquake was. So okay, beautiful one... like the city of San Jose. Ian's got more beehive thoughts. <laughs> oh no, no, no. One minute, one so many, so many, you know, uh spokes of this wheel or whatever of a podcast. Um <laughs> real quick, totally different sport, uh hockey, but Ottawa trade traded Zaitsev to Chicago and a bunch of picks for future considerations. So they just made room for a human being on their cool. blue line. So let's, <laughs> let's fucking go. go. Let's, fucking go. let's do it. Woo, Ooh, more on that later tonight in the two guys, one cup podcast. <laughs> that's a, that's As what we, we call foreshadowing. Yeah, that's, a, that's a plug. <laughs> let's go baby. Oh, God, this is I where like my, my square moves into a small square in the corner, and then you guys yeah. come up and then uh-huh. <laughs> put your cat on. Where's let's your cat? pick them out now. We're doing <laughs> hockey now, baby. Uh, speaking of teams that aren't doing the same thing that they used to be doing and aren't as good as they used to be, it's the Seattle oh. Sounders. Wow. Uh, <laughs> am I wrong? Am I wrong? They're not oh. as good as they used to be. That's just bold. Hold that on, Ian, bold don't, don't you, I know what you just saw. I need you to hold on. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I I will, I will. Do not click on that page. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, they were 11th in the West last year. They, um, obviously that's a huge underperformance for them and they expect to be better. Will Bruin left though, just met Jesuit high school legend, Will mm. Bruin. So, so obviously they're hard. terrible. Yeah. That's going to be hard for them. No redemption. Exactly. Pull back from, but um, 
obviously they'll be better than 11th thoughts on how much better range from like sixth to first uh among the mls yeah major league soccer soccer.com uh experts here but um yeah i mean i i don't know what what do you think went wrong for seattle and what's going to be better this year yeah and i think like a lot of it can be written off too like there's a a real noticeable dip after the concaf champions league so like i think a lot of it was their kind of lack of depth and you know it's mls salary cap wise structure wise you can only do so much and we see that every year that teams get hurt if they have deep runs in the champions league and seattle did mm-hmm. and they're not the same afterwards but the fact that they weren't able to ever kind of write the ship as the season went on is a bit concerning like they had a real bad second half of the season so like i think they'll be better but i'm not as high on them as i maybe would be in other circumstances like i'm putting a lot into that poor run last year yeah Yeah, I mean, I think that won't be great, Um, but we'll see. I think they'll be fine, but not amazing. Um, Now, Ian, you're released to talk about this jersey. Go ahead and do it. This is is spicy. This is a spicy jersey. I did not realize that it was the Bruce Lee. Oh, yes. I swear, out of the corner of my eye when I clicked on it, I saw the B and then I saw two E's and I said, is this also a B related? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> it's like about to lose my Mormons are just taking over the league. I um, this is cool. This is great. Except for the fact that the freaking back is black. I am super torn on this Jersey because on the surface, it's fine. It slaps. It's cool. It's not a fucking Seattle jersey. That's true. That's That's true. true. Seattle has the most iconic colors in sports, and then they're just red and yellow. As an alternate, though, if you look at this as like, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I I get it, but it's like I also I I didn't until just this moment associate Bruce Lee with Seattle in any way. I mean, maybe they do, but he's from there apparently. But like. I associate Dwight Schrute with Seattle more than Bruce Lee. So maybe next year it's a Dwight Schrute, Schrute Rain, Rain Wilson jersey. You know, who knows? Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's cool. Maybe as a third, if you want to make that argument that I'm fine with it, Ian's getting talked to right now, talked down to, I would assume, um, <laughs> because he was <laughs> he's looking up at the person. Someone heard um, his takes. Okay, so that's enough more right. talk. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think it looks cool. I just, uh, Seattle's colors are so iconic that I feel a little weird about a red and yellow jersey. That's fair. Um, I can get behind that sentiment. But it's 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 cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Okay, it's cool. Uh, Justin, why don't you talk to us about the MLS team you are geographically closest mm. to, Sporting Kansas City? Wait, a word, real quick, before you do that. How do we oh, feel right. about the fact that alphabetically? They covered on the uh, Total Soccer Show podcast, they covered St. Louis after Seattle and not immediately after San Jose. Oh, like as an S-A-I-N-T? Because it's, S-T, it's no. S-T Lewis, which I hate. I hate it. No. Thank you. That's yeah. all I wanted. I wanted no. confirmation. <laughs> Technically, <laughs> we should be before NHL. San Jose. Right. If that right. was the case. Right. Right. Yeah. Because it's I not, like but it, I don't like you that. don't spell the city stuff, Lewis. It's not <laughs> saying it's short for something. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. do they do NYCFC? Is it if there was like a in new an actual new Salem team or whatever? Would that be after and what? Anyway, I don't know. Uh, Steven's got the, issues. We're airing our grievances. Move here. on Sorry, to the sporting the festivus of the MLS season. <laughs> move on to the sporting KC Wizards, please. Yeah. Um, so SKC, they had a bad year last year, but that was a lot of the success the year before was driven by Alan Polito. Alan Polito was injured in the preseason last year. He'll be back. He's fit and looks good from everything I've seen. They bring in Tim Leopold, who uh, plays for or played, I guess, for Hamburg in the set two Bundesliga um, once upon a time in one of my FIFA saves. Uh, Hamburg won the Bundesliga and he was on it. So like take that with a grain of salt, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but they're kind of like ride or die by Alan Polito. They have an iffy back line. They don't have a lot of depth at center back, but like offensively, they should be good. Like assuming that that all plays out and like Agata turned into a pretty good player last year. But like, again, it all depends on like 
depth wise, they're not incredibly deep. So like if injuries hinder them again, they could have another bad season. But if they're back to what they were the previous season with Alan Polito, then they'll be good. Uh, Could like be it. problematic, but probably good is where I put them. They're in that range. That is what most people rank them as to fifth, third, sixth, mm. um, in that you know definite playoff contention range. Uh, I would like to see them good again. I would like to have a rivalry rivalry with them, um, and uh, you know can't have that when they're bad. Uh, their jerseys are extremely mid to me. I mean they're fine, but they're just basic. Yeah, and it's the same, same as always. Mm-hmm. I like baby blue, but yeah, it's kind of or sky blue. Fine. Also, what what were the jersey? What were these graphic creators thinking, putting these all on the same color of background? That doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, Vancouver Whitecats are a team, and let's move on. No, <laughs> uh, they finished ninth in the West last year, which would put them, I believe, in the playoffs this season, but didn't last season. Uh, there's a lot of similar kind of rankings for them this season mm. as well what's your vibe on the white cast let's go to let's go to just or ian first ian what's your overall vibe on vancouver white i check um terrible i i can't say i can't say i really like too many teams that don't just go with like the city united thing whatever the name of the city like white caps mm-hmm. feels very 90s which i guess is kind of cool for it's some from teams. the 70s though oh really yeah even so. worse <laughs> doubling down uh it's i don't know i honestly forget that this team exists like i know toronto has a team and montreal has a team and i'm like oh there's one way out i think i get them confused with the nba grizzlies that were in vancouver for a while and then left and so i just assume they don't have anything but the vancouver canucks this is the team i'm gonna go see uh city play this year and i'm glad to know that they are not good so maybe i'll see a win <laughs> Yeah, they're uh, they're an interesting team. I think they have like some players like Julian Gressel. If they use him right, could be effective. Like Gold, if they again, if they use him right, could be effective. But yeah, I'm not sold on this team. I would have them in like that 11, 12, 13th range. Not worse than Minnesota, but there is how I think of them. And um, to me, their their jerseys are as bad as it gets. Yeah, they're I've, I've they're rough. Yeah. That's like um. This looks like the Chicago Fire jersey from a couple of years ago. Honestly, it's like <laughs> take those logos out, and this is like something my mom would have bought for me to wear from like Old Navy in like 2004, and be like a polo. I'm like, don't you like that fat ass stripe in the middle? I'm like, no. I'm like, well, <laughs> you don't have any money, so you're wearing this. <laughs> Uh, well, I do. So it gives me a <laughs> lot of memories of. Oh, hold on, let me. <laughs> Gotta bring up the just, chat. Just in this downloading memories. <laughs> it's like um, I don't know. Yeah, it just feels recycled. Okay. Recycles the word you're going with. Recycled, yeah. really. Recycled. Like this is like the same kit, just in white blue instead of red and white yeah that's the same you're right uh that's uh that's all the teams other than st louis city sc which we've talked about at length um they're going to struggle to compete obviously the top teams in this conference are way above st louis city the middle teams in this conference most people would argue are significantly above city um it's all about just not embarrassing yourselves this season. And I'm good. I think we can do it. I believe. Yeah, and Bradley I think they'll Carnell. have like a strong, cohesive identity. Like if you look at that starting 11, so Berkey, if you look at the starting 11 of the last preseason game, which I think tells you a lot of what's going to happen on opening day, Berkey, mm-hmm. of course, at goalkeeper, Dewitsky and Nelson at fullback, Parker and Hebert at center back, Blum, who I think is going to be real good as a center D. Um, Lewin right there next to him. It's a nice little two-person pair. They did have some trouble controlling things, so that's something to pay attention, especially mm-hmm. since they've been wanting to use Indiana Vasilev and Perez in those spots as well. Your um, German pronunciation on Lewin was 
just awful, by the Thank way. You. Just Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Don't, <laughs> don't send this to your coworkers, please. I will. I'm immediately. <laughs> I'll listen to this. Live in. Listen to this braying mule butcher your language. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think they'll I'm, be fine. They're going to be like, they'll lose some games. You, everyone has to be prepared for that. The, but the, one thing Total Soccer Show did give us was name vibes on Klaus and Indiana Vasilev. Name vibes. They have um, a strong cohesive I'm also a identity. Fan of, uh, Blom. Blom. Roma of Berkey's course. a dope name, too. Yeah. I mean, all these names rock. Dope names. Uh, good vibes. The team feels good. Like, that's that can take you far. Let's... We only have two of our three potential DPs, and we've all all heard about Lutz, mm-hmm. Lutz's comments on DPs. Um, but I do think the possibility of a big DP signing over the summer does uh, linger out there. I don't want to say a name. I'm just so I'm just going to pick one out of a hat, like Lionel Messi. Like you could <laughs> like theoretically. Say for <laughs> it is a uh, possibility it is you can't deny that it is yeah, possible things, in the strictest sense you know word. things fall out with miami still wants that's to come right. down the last we got the that's space right. for you Lyon. basically the same climate as well that's right. so, that's right. Sticky. And, and equally <laughs> equally as many uh big name like, celebrities associated everyone with always <laughs> says st louis is basically paris and that's, that's right. what you need to learn and caroline kendall that's we'll probably give him part ownership you know yeah. so and you gotta you gotta that's um, right. yeah i think my big questions that we've talked about is also like is job klaus going to get enough service i think that's the prevailing question and that's probably what ends up being addressed in the office or in the summer window but i don't know it remains to be there's so much so much unknown with like what actually happens because totally they started out in the preseason like looking like they were going to be cohesive and run through everyone. And then you start running into good teams, like actually playing their starting rosters and they were competitive, but they were losing those games by one goal. So I think that's probably a lot of what you look at this year, losing close games by one goal to teams that you're like, okay, I guess it's okay that we lost. Yeah. Um, Before we go deep into our preview, we do need to look at the, uh, Eastern Conference kits because that's more important. Mm. So let's talk about uh, Atlanta United. It's very basic, very typical. Atlanta United still looks clean, I would say. Six out of 10. Six out of 10 for safety. I, but I like when, like, sort of like Kansas City as well, when a team has like an identity like that and they just yeah. keep it going. Like, I yeah, don't it's classic it. Atlanta. And it looks good. I, I agree with that. I hate to say this, but Charlotte is an 11 out of 10. This is a okay, perfect that's... jersey. I love it. I do like that purple. That's so I, that's uh Barry Pop Tarts vibes. It's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> yeah that's like hot. The, <laughs> the embossed crowns also, it's going to look normal with a, with a purple back. So I think it's a win all over the field on that one. That is good. Um, I hate to get uh, more props, but that is a good kit. Chicago, on the other hand, uh, you, you're doing too much. You got to do less. <laughs> it's also they left a blank spot for like an yeah. impending sponsor that they don't have. Yeah. So it's just like this blank spot in the middle of the kit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They should have just written Chicago. There. That's yeah. That's so embarrassing. Yikes! And also, like, what are you doing, Chicago? Not having a kit sponsor before the start of the season. That's it's not true. like you're you're like the third largest media market in the country. What are we doing that's here? True. <laughs> they couldn't find anyone that wanted free pub. I mean, it's not free pub. <laughs> no free it's pub. Free pub. But, uh, FC Cincinnati, there's a, a splotch. Looks like someone peed all sure. over or worse. I've <laughs> never liked any of these Cincy kits. This is like maybe one of the more least offensive Powerful. ones, considering <laughs> the one. You remember the one, one the I forget if it was last year or two years ago, where they had like the line down the center and it was black and then like a different color blue from the blue that mm-hmm. they use. Uh-huh. Um, this is better than that, but yeah, it's still yeah. not great. Uh, Columbus is very clean, very simple mm-hmm. Columbus. I think it looks good. Mm-hmm. It's fine. I'll give it a seven out of 10. Our uh, boys over at Bryant and me said it's fine, and I agree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the DC Cherry Blossom kit, a nine out of 10. It's not quite as clean as the 
um washington nationals cherry blossom setup but it's very good I this is it. good yeah i i like this a lot if i were to buy a kit it'd be dc united it'd that's be this one. i get yeah. that that's fair uh we already talked about houston we already talked about skc we already talked about la and la let's talk about inter miami First in overpaying and illegally acquiring designated players. <laughs> First uh, in uh, banning the athletic from their media day. And, uh, right. and what last... are you going to do on media day? You don't want the media around. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what a great, what a great statement that is, by the way. Uh, this kid is uninspired. It's fine. Yeah. It's not. It's just yeah, it's, yeah. Even the pink isn't all that pink. So yeah, like yeah. that's like. The biggest sin of Miami of all the sins that they made is that they haven't gone like fluorescent neon pink in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. insane. It's an absolute loss. Nashville's Johnny Cash kit's very cool. Um all, I mean, I get their man in black kits, I get it. They're almost still a little too simple, but I still mm-hmm. like it. I like it for the fact that's a Johnny Cash kit. Like yeah, that. I mean that Johnny yeah. Cash is a baller, so um, you skipped. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say you skipped Montreal, but they haven't released it. So <laughs> <laughs> Montreal skipped Montreal. Losers. New England. Uh, I kind of like this one. It's it's got like a weird color burst pattern, but it kind of works for me. I don't know. How do you guys mm-hmm. feel? The sash. I like a good sash, and it's not like a yeah. traditional where it, it has like. I fade. don't like it anytime that the logo is like a bar that like interrupts the pattern like mm. this one. But um, the rest of it, I like. Yeah, I agree. The bar is a little jarring. New York Red Bulls, very nice. Going with that somewhere kind of um, dusty, smoky vibe as the LAFC one, but with the dusty smoke being blue, and I like it. I think it all looks good. Yeah, it's good. The colors definitely work better. I love Red Bulls logos because the logo is actually a logo and not just words, so that always makes things look a little better. Look right. at this New York City SC mosaic tile. This is hot. Absolute beauty. I think I think they might have done a little too much in the shoulders. That might be like a little too different. And of course, I'm going to hate that on the back, it's just going to be nothing. But uh, over, I like the right. torch that they have as they're like Liberty Torch. Very yeah, nice. That's good. Yeah, that works for me. That one works for me a lot. Um, Orlando SC always killing it always beautiful purple baby yeah and uh when i found out some insider info from being down in orlando uh the wall is what they call their supporter section so that's the wall the inspiration there is there another brick in it perhaps i would assume yeah (laughs) thank you i needed needed that validation all right so let's move on to the absolute best of the crop here Wow. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, oh, yes. Yeah. Philly does not disappoint when Philly it comes to these kids. <laughs> exactly. Um, also, like the crest being a snake and not their typical Union crest is that's mm-hmm. good for me as well. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Justin, are you coming to Orlando in August to cover the St. Louis City? I don't know. Game? I don't know if I need. I don't know if I can commit to that on the podcast. I would like you to wants a recording. Where can you imagine? Where would you rather be in August than a hot ass Orlando? Folks, Orlando. If I could have a moment to rant about Orlando here for a moment, I uh, did did love it. The did love it as a, Orlando. As, did love in? it as a city, uh, just in general. <laughs> yeah, tell us more. Why do you hate Orlando? Just like, is it because so, it's nine tenths theme park? Yeah, and it's so like samey, everything else, like wide ass streets. Yeah. Uh, People driving like wide. maniacs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Agreed. Um all right. Well, that's fair. Uh let's um oh sorry, I'm not done with the jerseys. Yeah, Philly, Philly Union classic, fantastic as always. Portland, absolute slay. Um and uh we've got st louis we haven't talked yet about the oh, yeah. new away talk about our away kits that are also um, freaking phenomenal Very i good. think you're a little higher on them than i am they're like fine too. i like them from oh. a wearing around standpoint like yeah they're, they're, mm-hmm. they're simple I, I they're clean they don't I've heard some people say they're awful. I don't get that at all. I don't they're like you, inoffensive. At, it doesn't at do enough to be awful. <laughs> exactly. Um, 
I am still disappointed by the lack of a Purina Czech Croatia kit, but hopefully that comes with time. Oh, yeah, we I think got, they went, Steven, they have plenty I, of time to spend your money. <laughs> <laughs> and people also, the Total Soccer Show people were also hating on the homes, which I think is insane. What? I don't I don't love the half and half as much anymore, but um, it's still, I mean, it's still clean. The colors yeah. are nice. But, I like them. I would like it if they didn't wear red shorts. So I'm like, if they went with a... Like Nate, like if they went with that yeah. blue color for the shorts. I think uh, I'd like them more, but yeah, agreed. Um, Toronto's very clean, very classic Toronto. Nothing bad about them. They're fine. Nothing like mind blowing about them either, but I think they look good. Yeah, they're fine. Uh, we already covered Vancouver. So that's the list. Canada's teams are both last alphabetically, <laughs> except for Montreal because they don't have a team or they don't have a jersey at least. They don't have a jersey. Um, might as well not have a team if you ask me. <laughs> Sorry, this fan. <laughs> I mean, like Montreal in general, it's not going great up there. If I can, uh, so might as well just break it down and rebuild, tear it all down, start a new team. But yeah, folks, we are uh, a couple days away. That's right. The game is on Saturday. Uh, Justin, take us through your preview. What are you expecting? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I think they'll come out hot with the emotion of the moment, and they're such a heavy pressing team, a hard pressing team, and so like definitely be ready for that. Um, a lot of the kind of talk in preseason are that how they just don't really tire; they come at you at waves, and I think that's the goal. Uh, Berkey called his teammates quote a bunch of animals in the uh, Apple TV. MLS room. So I thought that was cool. Uh, it really just tells like that pack mentality, which they're going to have to have, because as we've talked before, they're not the most talented of teams. They're not uh, um, good, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think they'll, like, I'm not sure, you know, probably come away from Austin. I think that's a game that Austin probably win in their home opener, unless they're just not ready for the intensity, which it's been broadcasted. So I would think that they'd be ready for it. But, and I'm looking forward to the home opener. So I guess oh, the goal is to not embarrass yourself against the team that finished second in the West last year and then bring it home. So yeah, lose by one goal, score score a goal and win, lose by only a goal or, you know, tie it up. Obviously win, but that might be mm-hmm. a little hard. We'll see. Um, I don't know. It's just fun that, like you said, that they're a team that's going to press, like even if they don't end up being overly great this season like that's at least like an exciting way to play and for like a a city that's grabbing onto a new team and everything they can like enjoy that style of play rather than sitting on their heels the whole game like if there is defense anything that st louis loves it's hustle and that's right grit (laughs) determination so yeah it'll be good i am i am very excited to actually have something to analyze also Mm-hmm. And just not talk mm-hmm. about hypotheticals anymore. Who's our I whipping boy going to be? Throw throw a dart at the board. Who's the whipping boy? We need to plan to do a reaction podcast after the game on Saturday or Done. probably on Sunday. One of right. at least two of us, but hopefully all three of us can do it. Um, Al City SC rising up. Mm-hmm. If if you guys don't focus, focus yeah, shout follow. out. Al said ESC on uh, Twitter. You should immediately. So Shout out to the app. best Twitter account on the app right now, if you ask me. Right. Well, I mean, ours is the best. Right, right, right. Is <laughs> the second best, but still. Um, yeah, I can't wait. I'm so excited for uh, Vice Captain Tim Parker and um, Captain Roman Berkey to take the field, to lead the team onto the field. I really, I'm like so excited. Um We've been waiting for this for so long, and it's finally time. So everybody enjoy it. I'm, I don't know what else to say. It's time. It's go time. We, time. Need, a, we, time. Need, we need a game time uh, motto, but I don't have one. So I'm just going to say. It's a work in progress, yeah. Owl, owl up. Soccer. Yeah. <laughs> owl up. That's right. Owl, owl for city. Let's go. <laughs> Bear your claws. I don't know. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> Talons, uh, folks, talons. we'll be back hopefully this on that weekend. note stay away from any staircases that's or right and increased all sightings in the city exactly. but outside of that uh, close your door you. like <laughs> is that how it got in there the door was open you gonna how walk inside the and close in? the door I, I like how we're saying is that how it got in here like this is an acceptable theory um <laughs>
That's right. She should have closed the door. That should have been Michael Peterson's defense. <laughs> I can't oh, wow. get her to close every door. Okay. You can't. How could he expect that? Um, but if the door was open, why can not he hear her scream? That's it doesn't check out. There's some the, holes. <laughs> this, this is spiral, folks. We've gone off the rails. Hopefully, the St. Louis City game on Saturday will not spiral into a conspiracy theory about Kathleen Peterson. But you can, <laughs> you can <laughs> never be too probably. sure. You can never be too sure. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. It's finally soccer. The next time you hear our voices on this podcast, we will have a St. Louis City SC <laughs> soccer team to. Uh, cover. So uh, Talon's out and have a great night. Adios. See ya.